open our Bibles. Go, let's go to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. As we continue the anointing. He, uh, the anointing's purpose. We've been on it. This, this will be part number 11, praise God. And so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, tonight about hearing under that anointing. Uh, hearing by the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says in, in Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Notice... Um, Notice what it says here, uh, if you will look with me, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen. Verses 1, now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is awakened out of his sleep, and he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right hand of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who, who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said, Do you know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, now this is, this is what the Lord uh, put in my heart this week. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. And then he says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, this is the word of the Lord. Now notice this, what was he talking about? He was talking about the anointing. The bowls being full of oil, two trees of olive, olive uh, trees standing next to it. In other words, uh, filling those bowls. Now notice this, so we know that that talks about the anointing. But then he said this, uh, he said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. And so, and then he, of course, he told him the word. But, but what I got out of that was, it takes the anointing to hear what the Lord is saying. It takes the anointing. Now, how many people know that uh, you can be in church? And uh, not hear the Lord. You can read your Bible and not hear from the Lord. You can uh, hear your pastor preach and not hear him from the Lord. Why? Because it takes the anointing. Each and every one of us have an anointing. And we have to draw from that. You see what I'm saying? And so we understand that this scripture, as we said earlier, states, it's not by might nor power, but by the Spirit who produces the anointing. So it is the Holy Spirit that produces this anointing for us to hear. So when the word is released, it's the Holy Spirit that is, that is, is equipping us with the anointing to hear of the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? So to hear from God through his word takes the anointing. Amen. The anointing, as we said earlier, it's an empowerment uh, that God, through the Holy Spirit, gives us the ability to understand his word, right? Now notice this. Hearing the anointed word of God. I'm talking about hearing the anointed word of God. Anointing or the anointed word produces power. Now, you know what I'm talking about when you hear maybe someone that's preaching and there's no anointing on that person, but yet he's using the word, but then there's no anointing. And so you're kind of having to press through to hear this word. But when the anointing is present, well, you can just sit under the anointing. That's probably why Jesus was able to teach for hours and hours, because it was the anointing on him. Uh, you know, when you sit under Kenneth Copeland, you can sit hours and hours. It's the anointing that's coming. Uh, and it goes on. You can, you can sit under people when they're preaching the word under the anointing, and the anointing just captivates you. You learn. You get revelation. It produces power. Say with me, power. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. And this is so... Uh, it, 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 we, we know this, we've read it, but let's look at it because we're talking about the anointing. Now notice this, in the 10th chapter of Romans, hallelujah, the 10th chapter of Romans, and notice what it says here in verses 13, um, for whosoever, uh, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He then shall... How then shall they call on him who they've never believed? Now let's stop here for a moment. How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? 
How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? See, it takes the anointing. And in this particular verse, it says, and they shall hear, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So the word preacher is one who heralds the message, one who proclaims the message, but it's going to take the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now drop down to verses, um, let's look at verses 17 now. Hallelujah. It says here, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice this, by the word. So it takes the word to hear, the, to hear from the Lord, but we forget the anointing has to be present. You see what I'm saying? When there is no anointing, the word is going to go and the person is going to hear it, but it's going to go right over them. And that's why you find people that are dozing off and not listening and then they don't really know. And then they can, at lunchtime, you can ask them, what did the pastor talk about? Well, I really don't know, but it was good. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so we know this is how faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, right? The word of God. But we got to remember, it's the anointed word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, you remember that time I told you about a young man that came to my dad's church. He knew the word and he was just every, he was just saying the word, saying the word, saying the word. But it was like, what is going on? The word is great, but there's no anointing on that, right? And so it, it was kind of obvious that he knew he was just had head knowledge of the word, right? And I never saw him again, right? So faith, in this case, doesn't come by reading your Bible unless you're hearing from God. You've got to hear from God when you read your Bible. Faith doesn't come by hearing a preacher, like I said earlier, unless you're hearing from God. You, you have to... Put your, your life and your anointing focusing on that word to receive from God. Faith doesn't come by what you have heard. And this is what uh, Ken Copa says. It comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you'll be hearing and hearing. Amen. So is it possible to go to church and not hear the word of God? It's possible. How many people do you know, or maybe you've experienced this, that you went to church and you didn't hear a word. <laughs> you daydreamed, hallelujah. I think I remember those days as a teenager being in church, amen. It's the anointing that you hear from God. And that's what I want to talk about, uh, hearing under the anointing of God, right? His anointing allows us to hear, not only to hear, but to get revelation of it. And to get revelation means that we have to have understanding of the word by the anointing. How many times have you read the word and all of a sudden you have understanding of it? And all of a sudden it brings revelation to you. And you'll never forget what you sense at that moment that revelation came for you. Uh-huh, that was the anointing, hallelujah. That was the anointing. So his, it's his anointing on our life through the word of God that we hear, right? An unwilling heart will not hear from the anointing of God. Uh, he'll have a deaf ear. And that's exactly why people are in church and they're not gaining. Today I was hearing the radio. I hear the radio and uh, I like to hear Kenneth Hagin and uh, all those on, on the radio at, 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 in the morning. And there was a lady that called in and she says, uh, she told the radio station, I don't go to church, but this is where I get my feeding. Now notice this. This is where I get my feeding, but she doesn't go to church. I'm glad she's hearing, but she's really not hearing. Because what she's not hearing is, do not forsake the assembling of yourself, right? As you see the day approaches. So she's hearing, but not really hearing under the anointing, you see? Because once you hear under the anointing, the anointing will quicken to her, say, you know what, you better get in church, find you a church. Get in the Word of God, hallelujah, amen. And so we find situations, and Keith Moore said something years ago that I took notes of. Go with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, um, I just, just so love these wonderful people that got put in our lives to learn the Word, hallelujah. And in 2 Timothy, now we were in the service, actually, and everybody was quiet. He, we had gone to lunch. It came late. And, and I told Pastor Christine, boy, it's sure quiet in here. Remember, we went to the barbecue place, came back, smelling like barbecue. And we were late. Uh, but uh, I noticed that people were so quiet at that meeting. I said, uh-oh, he's talking some serious stuff. Notice what it says in 2 Peter, the first chapter, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Jesus Christ. To Timothy, as a beloved, that's a spiritual son, to Timothy. Notice what he says. 
grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance, now notice this, the genuine faith that is in you, which dwell first in your grandmother Lois, Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it is in you also. And notice this, what is he seeing here? Yes, he misses his spiritual son. Uh, he can't wait to see him. He has tears in his eyes. But he prays for him day and night. And he, and he said this, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remember the genuine faith that is in you. Now, how do we get genuine faith? Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Genuine faith... Some translation says, does yours say unfeigned faith? Unfeigned faith is not hypocritical faith, not pretend. It is actually genuine and it's sincere. Now, I believe when we're not hearing the word of God under the anointing, then we get into presumption. Now remember, presumption looks like, talks like, acts like faith, but it's not hearing from God. It's simply making a decision based upon your flesh, but it looks like faith to others. He's saying here, uh, I see that you have genuine faith. He says, genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded it is in you also. In other words, he is sincere. Uh, Timothy is very sincere. Why? Because he's hearing under the anointing. When you and I hear the word of God through the anointing, by the anointing, by the Holy Spirit, then that quickens us to walk in genuine faith. Now notice what the Amplified says. Now, the Amplified really brings it out. The Amplified classic. Sincere and unqualified faith is what Paul saw in Timothy. Of he said, of your learnt, leaning of your entire personality on God, absolute trust and confidence. Wow, can you say amen to that? Oh, let it be, let it be said of us that God will see sincere faith in us. Uh, it would be so sincere. It, it is not hypocritical. It's genuine. Can you say amen? It's an absolute, they're absolutely trusting and having confidence in God. They're leaning their entire personality on God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that is, that is hearing God in the anointing, knowing that it's God. It's pure. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice is Jesus in Mark 11. Let's go to Mark 11. Pastor Christine's favorite scripture, when she said Mark 11, 11. We're still seeing Mark 11, 11. Today we saw it right before lunch. Well, yeah, right before lunch. 11, 11. Amen. And notice what it says in Mark 11. Uh, the Bible says in Jesus, are you there? 11, and Jesus went into Jerusalem and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. He just saw something happening at, at the church, right? At the temple, they were selling. They were really cheating each other. Now drop down to verses uh, 15 now. The Bible says, so they came to Jerusalem, so they had left, they came back, then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and, and the seats of those who sold doves. Well, what a, what, a, what a thing, right, to see, right? And he would not allow anyone to carry wear through the temple. Then he taught he taught them. And then, of course, he said, this house, my house should be called a house of prayer uh, for all nations, but you have made it a den, right? Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Jesus, at this time, when he entered into the temple, instead of acting upon what he thought was right, 
He looked about. Now that very speaks volumes to me. He looked about, looked about, looked about. Why did he look about? Because he, he captured everything that he saw, but he couldn't act on it because he needed to hear the anointed word of God. Now, this is something that we have to learn. Put, us, put yourself in a position. If you ever get yourself in a position to, have to make a decision, you have every right to put everything on hold and step back and hear the anointed word of God. And this is where the enemy catches people at that very moment. They're, he's expecting them to make wrong choices, wrong decisions. And then they turn around and say, well, you know, um, I thought this was God. No, it wasn't God. You just got in a position where you thought, and it was presumptuous, really, you thought that you were hearing from God. See, Jesus needed to hear the anointed word of God. Can you say amen? He needed to hear the anointed word of God. And so that's what we need to do. Now that we're talking about the anointing and understanding the anointing, it's an empowerment. And we talked about it all in 10 series about the anointing. But now we're coming to a point where this anointing has to work all the time in us when we're hearing the word, when we're spending time with the Lord, when we're making quality decisions with the Lord. You know, it's amazing when you, uh, you know, one night, I think it was last night or the night before I got out to see the beautiful stars. It was so windy the night before. It was so windy and it was beautiful. Stars were up. And I just lifted my hands and started worshiping the Lord. Now, it was windy, right? It was windy. But I was worshiping the Lord, and I just said, Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in my life. And all of a sudden, that wind just intensified. And I said, Father, yes, Lord, I, I, I hear you answering me. You see what I'm saying? So it was the wind that confirmed the anointed word of God that I was hearing, right? And so think about that. This is constantly, you have Jesus, you have the Lord constantly speaking to you. We just need to take some time under that anointing and listen to him. And it was so beautiful because the trees were just blowing harder at that very moment, at that very moment that I was talking to God. And I just said, I'm going to stay out here as long as I could. Amen. So, and then little Louie's kind of holding on, looking at me, right? <laughs> we need to hear the anointed word of God like Jesus did, right? Go with me to the book of Acts now. Let's look at the apostle Peter in the book of Acts. Uh, and so these are examples of, of people that have heard from the Lord under the anointed word of God. And remember, it takes, it, you need the anointing to hear from God, especially the more that we're living in these days. You need the anointing to come through so that we can understand the revelation of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts, the ninth chapter, picking up in verse, um, let's look at verses um, 36. Um, Acts 9, 36. Amen. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named uh, Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. Now notice this right here. But it happened in those days that she became sick. She was a believer and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Now notice what it says in verse 39. Then Peter arose and went with them. Amen. When he had come, uh, when he had come, they brought him to the upper room and all the windows stood by him, all the widows, excuse me, all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. Now this is typically uh, what, what people, which you can see when someone dies, they're, they're immediately um, showing the honor and they're showing things. But listen to this, but Peter, I like this, but Peter, say with me, but Peter. But Peter put them all out, knelt down, and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. <laughs> and there's a, she's been dead already. They washed her. They already, they already laid later in a certain room ready to, to mourn for her. 
They started showing all that she made. Now notice this. Now, question here. They saw her die, so they assumed that she would be dead forever. Not inquiring of the Lord. Now, 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 what I'm telling you, this is powerful. Without inquiring of the Lord, Peter goes, anointed man of God, with the anointed word of God, kneels down. I would have loved to hear what he said to the Lord. And what the Lord told him. Now remember, under the anointed word of God, it produces power. Now, if Peter was just like them, he would have said, okay, well, yeah, that's beautiful purple she made. Yeah, I understand. We're going to miss her. She was a great lady to our ministry. She did very well. She gave, she sowed many seeds, so it's going to be, it's going to be all right, everybody. You see what I said? But what did he do? He kneeled to hear from the Lord. And the Lord, under the anointed word from God, which, remember, the anointed is an empowerment that represents the all the presence of God coming to him. Now, the, the anointing is by the Holy Spirit. So let's don't, let's don't forsake the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to us here on earth what God is saying, and it comes through the anointing, right? Can you hear that? Hallelujah. Amen. So just like Jesus, Peter, excuse me, Peter, did I say Paul? Peter, excuse me. Peter had to hear from God. And what happened? He prayed for, and Tabitha got up. Amen. How beautiful that is, right? Now let's look at another one. Go with me to the 16th chapter. And this is, uh, this is the Apostle Paul. Now if these men walk this way by example of Jesus, and Jesus being taking the example of, of the prophets and, and of God himself, then where are we on this? Where are we on this? You see what I'm saying? And so that's why we pray for about everything. I remember going to a luncheon with a bunch of pastors and, and uh, you know, one of the pastors there said, let's all pray for our meal. And uh, we all bowed our heads. He, beautiful prayer. I love the way people pray. Beautiful prayer. But there was one pastor who says, let me ask a question. Why do you guys pray when all that we have is blessed of God? And the Spirit of the Lord rose up in me and I said, you know, that's true. Everything you do has blessed of God, but you don't know if the devil's back there spitting in this thing. And I tell you what, and, and you know, and, and I thought about that. There are people like that that don't believe in praying for a meal. I don't know about you, but my meal tastes better when I pray. It, it fills me up and it's worth it. And I'm the happiest camper coming out of there. You see what I'm saying? Because see, you know, you know, oh gosh, if my daughter were to tell you what's behind the kitchens, Right. You have to really know what you're talking about, right? That's why you got to pray for everything. Amen? And the thing about that, God turns a hamburger that you prayed for powerful, beautiful, healthy. And if you didn't pray, then you'll be up all night saying, Oh, my stuff, my stuff. Amen. And so in other words, notice this. So verses, verses uh, let's look at verses, uh, where were we going? Chapter 16. Now notice this. Picking up in verses 16. All right? I notice this. Now it happened as we, Paul and Silas, went to prayer. Where did they go? To prayer. That's why it's so important. Prayer is very powerful. That a certain slave girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Now, right there, you would say, Well, she can't be possessed. You see what I'm saying? But notice this. But Paul, greatly annoyed. Some translation says discerning in his spirit. The discernment. Greatly annoyed. This is, where, this is where the anointing is, is strong on your life, that you discern things as you go in life. God will show you things. He'll tell you how to pray. When God tells you things how to pray, it's not to share with people. There are things that He can count on you praying because you're a prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice this. And He says this. He was greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. 
Let's stop here for a moment. We understand what happened at the rest, but, but what, I'm trying to, what we're trying to focus here is just like Peter, just like Jesus, Paul needed a word of the Lord. And notice this is so clearly. I, I, I remember, you know, in, in different situations where I would have never known someone possessed unless I had discernment. So I'm saying you have to have discernment in some sense, right? The pastor that we talk about in, in, in Illinois, he had a, a person possessed in his church for more than 40, 30 years, sat front row. Everybody knew her. She'd come, everybody move. And, uh, and so, so it didn't take long for, I mean, I don't know why the pastor never discerned. He just needed to cast that out. I don't know what the deal was there. I don't know. But it just took one service for me to be in to cast that devil out. But it was under the anointing. Now notice this, as I was preaching under the anointed word of God, I stood next to her without knowing who she was. And all of a sudden, she just, all her hair went forward and she growled. And I said, uh-huh. I know why I stood right there. So I kept preaching. Now remember, the word that under the anointing is powerful. I tell you what is powerful, hallelujah, man. And she was delivered over all those years. I told the pastor, pastor, how long? Many years, and they're all crying. Said, what is going on here? You know what I'm saying? So, so you, need, you need the anointed word of God. It's, it's, it's hearing the word of God by the anointing. Or you can say it this way, hearing the anointed word of God. Hallelujah, amen. Now notice this, you can have head knowledge of the word and get nowhere. But once you have the anointed word of God coming out of you, it's powerful. It produces. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians now. 1 Thessalonians. Oh, Jesus, so wonderful. In fact, I, I read uh, Jerry Savelle's latest uh, newsletter. I read it yesterday or day before yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I think. Yesterday, it was his, his most, most recent one. Really ministered to us. And you ought to read it. If you get his newsletter... You ought to read that one. That one there, it has a lot of insight of what he was preparing in the Spirit, what the Lord was preparing him. So you can see a lot. There's a lot of things that were happening, even his sermon, uh, Friday night and Saturday night and then Sunday morning and Sunday night. Sunday night's the one that you need to see it. But, but what I'm trying to say, see, there's power in the anointing. There's power, hallelujah, amen. And this is what he, what he put in there, and I had to, it just kind of confirmed with what I'm teaching tonight. In 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 5. Hallelujah. Amen. For our, are you there? 1 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul, speaking to the church of Thessalonica. He says, for our gospel did not come to you in word only. Now, this is so powerful. It did not come to you in word only, but also in power. There's that anointing. In power and in the Holy Spirit. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit that produced that anointing. And in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Let me read it from the Message Bible. The Message brings it out real clearly, like Jerry said in that newsletter. When the message we preached came to you, it wasn't just words. Now notice it says, something happened in you. The Holy Spirit put steel in your convictions. Oh, that's awesome. The Holy Spirit puts steel in your convictions. What does that mean? It's the power that is in that word, of that anointed word. It's the message that's preached. That's why um, we all need the anointing when we say the word. When we're going to talk to somebody, take some time and, and pray over that conversation before you go talk to somebody. Um, I remember a young man came to our church. I'll never forget, I use an example. A young man came to our church and he had just left another, not a church, another believer that called himself a prophet. And I can tell that if he didn't come from a local church, that was a problem right there for me. But he came from a prophet they were meeting in, in a house. And so I don't know how many people were there, but all I know that he talked with me about that. And so he came to our church. And, and so one day he came and he was troubled. So being troubled... You, you, you either have to get into faith and, and overcome that troubling and say, no, I'm going to hear the word of God tonight. I'm going to hear my pastor. I'm going to hear the word tonight under the anointing of my pastor. I'm going to hear the word. I'm going to rebuke. I rebuke all this 
whatever it was going through, whatever. I never knew what he was going through. Well, I preached that night, and I knew that it just bounced off him. I mean, I could tell. I can tell when the word hits you, and I can tell when it just bounces off you, right? Now, notice this. Uh, he called me a week later. I didn't see him in church in long. He called me a week later. He said, Pastor, can we, uh, he said this, can, can we meet with you at Starbucks? In fact, it was this Starbucks here. And I said, um, what time? He says, about 5.30. I says, uh, is there a problem? He said, no, no, I just want to talk with you. No, he said, we just want to talk to you. When he said we, I knew something was wrong, right? I've learned in ministry, don't set yourself up. Um, I've learned uh, from that instance and even more that when somebody asks for a meeting with you and they're in offense, don't visit with them. Don't visit with them because they're just going to puke. The best thing to do is have them come to the worship service and let the Lord heal them and lay hands on them, and that's it. Well, I went, and, and so I took my Bible with me, and the Holy Spirit said, I felt it in my spirit. The Lord said, don't take your Bible in there. And I said, that's strange. And then I heard in my spirit because the word's in you. I said, okay, that's, that's good enough. So I went, man, they, were, they cornered me. They were just blasting me. Well, the prophet was there. So-called. Yeah, so-called. And so they were blasting me. And finally, I remained calm and peace. I said, well, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad to hear what you, what you think. And thank you for the coffee. I got to go. And I love you in Jesus. And I walked away. Never saw them again, right? They, they, were, they were going to fry a pastor. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> when we go to Mexico, there's a sign that says, uh, Pastores al Carbón, means uh, barbecue tacos, uh, pastor al carbón, meaning, meaning uh, 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 tacos made on coal. They call it the, past, the, the fields. <laughs> and so that's what I felt. I felt like they put me on coal. I felt that, amen. And so, so I learned that when the word doesn't penetrate somebody, it's going to be open. They're going to be open for something. But when there's an anointing that you're hearing the word of God, you're getting, first of all, revelation of that word. And that revelation comes to you because you have understanding of that word by the anointing. Amen. No understanding, no anointing, no understanding, no revelation. And now you're questioning and you're also trying to figure out if that's the right word your pastor said. But when you receive of the anointing, it's powerful, right? Can you say amen? So in other words, every time you're under the anointed word of God, you get your answers. Every time you get your directions every time. You get your breakthroughs every time. You get deliverance, like you were saying. You get healing. I'm telling you, under the word of God, which the anointed word of God, there's power. How many times have I been to service sick and speaking the word of God, I get healed the moment I'm speaking the word of God. Amen. Come on, church, can you say amen? Speaking about Jerry Savelle, uh, he had just made a Canadian tour on a motorcycle, and he made it to the Southwest Believers Convention, and he, could, he was so hoarse, you couldn't you could hear him. And he said, I'm, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna preach this whole week. You're gonna believe God with me for a healing, right? And I said, oh my goodness. But I'll tell you, under the anointing of God, as Time went by, his voice became stronger and stronger and stronger. I, I literally saw the anointing work on his life because of the word of God. Now, if that can happen to him, think about what it can happen to you. The word of God coming to you. Listen, every time I come to church and I preach, I'm preaching under the anointing and I'm learning as I'm preaching. And, and it's amazing because I can go back. You know, the snippets that you're making, Dean. Uh, one of those snippets just this week, or a couple days ago, got over, over, over 400 and something views and clicks, almost 500 clicks, right? And so that's been happening. Uh, people are clicking on it. People that we don't even know are clicking it, and now they're starting to send uh, little, little things. Amen, and so glad to hear it. And, and so that tells me that when you pursue the anointing, of the word of God and you pursue it and you release it into the fields, into the harvest, people are going to hear under the anointed word of God. 
Then you say, Amen. So every time you're under the anointed word of God, you get your answers. Say with me, I get my answers. Say with me, I get my directions. I get breakthroughs. I get deliverance. And I get healings. Right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Just receive what you're asking for right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Heal from the crown to the soles. Uh, healed in the name of Jesus. Set free, Father. Blessed, anointed of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time you're under the anointing, what happens? There's an increased anointing that comes on you. Increasing anointing. Like Benny Hinn would say, there's an increased anointing coming on you. Increased anointing, right? And so uh, always we remember that sitting under the anointing of God, the word, the anointing, or the word, the anointing of the word of God, you're going to get breakthrough. You're going to get healing. But what's, what's happening, there's an increase of anointing on you. Increase. Increase. So activate that by faith when you leave the building and go do things. Activate that anointing that's increased, 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 huh? So let's, uh, let's get under the anointed Word of God. Amen? Let, let's allow God to minister to us again under the Word of God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. I want to show you something now. Uh, look at Philippians, the first chapter. Hallelujah. And so we're so excited because the Word of God is powerful. Amen? It has an anointing on it. And the anointing is what we want. I want the anointing. Uh, you know, I met with a pastor in California. I said, how's your church doing? He says, man, we have the fastest growing Holy Ghost church um, in, in California. And I preached that morning. Pastor Christine and I went to Los Angeles and preached there. And, uh, you know, it was a church like ours. Just, just you know, uh, you know uh, he's stepping in faith, right? And so it really blessed me to hear that. And so I kind of took that too. I said, you know, we have the fastest growing Holy Ghost Church in, in Oklahoma City. Listen to what it says in Philippians, the first chapter. Are you there, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, and then let's look at um, verses 7. Hallelujah. Notice what it says here. The word of the Lord says, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my chains and the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of grace. Say to me, of grace. Now, speaking about the anointing, it shows us something. Let me read to you the Amplified. It is right for me to feel this way about you because you, you have me in your heart as I have you in my heart. Since both in my imprisonment and my defense and my confirmation of the good news regarding salvation, all of you share in his matchless grace with me. Now notice this. Pastor Christine said it today. We, we're, we're partners with Jerry Savelle, so that's why we feel it. We feel the, 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 the situation that took place. We know that he's in heaven, but yet we feel, we feel. And, and it's a covenant relationship that we made with his ministry and him. Because we became connected to him in covenant. Uh, it's it, my spiritual uncle, uh, co covenant. And so at that very moment, I told Pastor Christine, we continue carrying on his legacy through his teaching, like Kenneth Hagin. We continue teaching his word. And, and it's amazing. Uh, Pastor Christine, on, on my desk, next to my desk, she put that prayer petition from Jerry Seville that he signed it for us. And it just blesses me, brought a lot of tears to me. But, but thank God for that. But no, notice this. The Lord said this, the anointing, when you're in covenant with someone, carries in your life. But notice this, that anointing brings that grace to a, a higher place in you. Now, grace, what is grace really? And uh, as, as, uh, as uh, a pastor said, he said, grace is the limit. Uh, what is it? Grace is, help me out somebody, you remember how I would say it? Grace God's ability coming on you to do what you cannot do on your own. Thank you for reminding me, right? So that, uh, that ability comes on us. Grace, grace. Now notice this. The grace that we have through hearing all wonderful speakers, there's so many wonderful speakers that we have. We can feel the anointing. That's why we love to go to these camp meetings and meetings because we sit under that anointing. So 
if I didn't go to that place to receive the increased anointing, it would have affected me in many ways. This is the same way it is with you. You come to your grace place to receive an impartation, to receive an increase of anointing. Say with me, grace place. Grace now, notice this. When I get into my place of grace, I get into that place of anointing. When I don't get into the grace or the place that is of my grace, then I don't receive that anointing. Now notice this, uh, I can tell the difference when I go to certain camp meetings and, and we're sitting there and man, we just come, we can feel it just bubbling. And then I can tell when I don't get into those places how uh, I'm, I'm depending on what I can hear and read or through media, whatever. You see what I'm saying? It's a big difference being in the presence where the anointing is, right? Now, there's no distance in the spirit, but there is a big difference when you're there. You can sense it. You know what I'm talking about? And so when people, like that lady says, I hear the word here, but, you know, she said, I don't go to church, but this is my word. This is where I get my word. That right there told me she's hearing partially of the word, partially of the anointing. But if she were to get into that place of grace to receive even more of that anointing, she'd, she'd take off, right? Now notice this. Look at Acts, the 19th chapter, and then we're going to close. So think about your grace place is where the anointing is. And as members of Oasis Center Church and those that are watching, your grace place is this anointing place, right? Now thank God for other ways that we receive newsletters, uh, uh, videos from others, and I, I do the same thing. I watch a lot of videos, and I read a lot of important information that comes from different ministries, and I learn so much. Uh, I write a lot of stuff down, but I can tell the big difference. I can tell the big difference when I'm sitting in front of the big screen versus if I go to that grace place. There's a big difference, right? Notice what it says in Acts, the 19th chapter, verses 11. Let me, let me get there here. Hallelujah. Amen, church? Amen. So thank God for the anointing, the anointed word of God, hearing under the anointed word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, of course, we talked about how it's important for us, and then we're concluding with get into that place of anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Acts 19, picking up in verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. And notice this. Then, are you with me? Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now, you can tell here this was not anointed. This is just trying to do what the anointed man of God did. Notice this. And so he says, also, uh, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish sheep, chief priest who did so. <laughs> Notice this. And the evil spirit answered, and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Let me just stop here, and then, of course, uh, we feel that the spirits got a hold of these guys, and they just ran down the road full of, the, of these spirits. What is this trying to tell us? What is this teaching us right here? The anointing on Paul was so powerful that even handkerchiefs were brought to him, and he laid hands on them. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That's powerful when you think about that, that even the shadow of Peter, or Paul, excuse me, uh, many were healed, just a shadow, being in the circumference of just his body shadowing on them. That's, that's the anointing of God. So here you have uh, the spiritualists that see, the, see this, and so they're using the name of Jesus. Now notice what I'm saying, not the anointed word of God. Come on, church. Uh, Jesus is the anointed one, but if you don't know Jesus, you can't take that anointing and use it. 
And in this case, they wanted to make money from it, right? And, and so it just caused a, an uproar in that city, right? And notice what it says, uh, special miracles by the hands of Paul. Special miracles. We talked about that one service where we were, we were recognizing different types of miracles that took place. Special miracles. You see what I'm saying? Special things. I saw many special miracles that literally just made me just, wow, how can one say there is no God? How can one say there is no anointing? But I think about uh, the people that got these special miracles of the service that I've seen with my pastors. If they didn't get to that grace place, they would still be like that. Possibly. Right? But thank God. Charisma article, Charisma magazine article wrote an article about persecution in Mexico City. And they, and they were persecuting a lot of pastors and their wives. And they were beating up a lot of pastors and wives. And, and so uh, we were having a camp meeting under a tent over a hill, which is like a mountain. Actually, it would be a mountain to us to them. It's a hill. And it had rained so hard. It was mud everywhere. We were under that tent canopy, and it, we were just having some wonderful services. And uh, it was on a Friday we started, and it was packed. It was packed from people just, and it was pouring rain. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of a sudden, I saw myself, I saw I was sitting in front row. I turned, and I saw people coming late to church, but full of mud. Literally, women, their dresses all wet with mud. Mud all over them. You see the mud. You know, that spoke volumes to me. They wanted to get to that grace place of anointing. And it was through that process that I saw was people that came from that village that were beaten up by people because of their Christian. Uh, they left the Catholicism and they became Protestants. And that's back in the early um, 80s, uh, late 80s, where that persecution happened in Mexico. It was serious. It was a serious. In fact, we were always wondering about our life, but God was with us when we were out there. But I, I saw that, and I saw that particular woman got healed. A, a very special miracle uh, literally, that's where I heard the power of God hit her. Her bone went into place. Her hip bone went into place. And, and literally, it sounded like a branch, a big branch fell off a tree. And that's how that bone just came, shifted. And when she felt it, she ran. But the thing that I got out of that also was, yes, thank God for the healing, amen. But the persistence of coming out in that rain, walking in the mud, I'll never forget the woman, that woman. And then we interviewed her. We interviewed her. My pastor interviewed us. I was videotaping. At that time, we had those big old VCR camcorders, those big ones, right? You're looking through the thing, right? And so, <laughs> so he, I, I, oh, I, I want those tapes, man, if I can find them. Um, anyway, uh, we interviewed her. And she said, I could not wait to get here. And they asked her, how long did it take? She says, in the rain and the mud, about three hours. And she had to go back. Of course, she spent the night under the tent because we had barbecue and all that. And the next day, she stayed for the service, and she went after the service was over. But she was totally healed. People were saying, wow. So here we see the anointed, the anointing working through Paul, and he was able to bring special miracles. That's for you and I today. Come on, church. Hallelujah. I, never be ashamed of what the anointing can do. Never be, step out, step out, step out in faith. And step out in faith and lay hands on people. It's not your job to heal them. It's God's job to, to do the work. Your job is just to touch them through Jesus. Reach out to them. Do, do mighty exploits for the kingdom of God in these days that we're living, right? Because of the anointing that you receive in your lives through the grace place, through the, through the impartations, through the word. Remember, it's the word of God, right? Hallelujah, and thank God for that. So, so I always want to increase in the anointing. Let's stand up, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. I want you to increase in the anointing. Say with me, the anointing is increasing in me every day. Say it again. The anointing is increasing in me every day. Amen. And let it be, when you get ready for work or wherever you're doing and looking at the mirror, say, you are anointed woman of God. You are anointed man of God. The power of God's working in you. See, the more you say it, the more you increase faith. And the more you increase faith, the more you have the ability to increase under that anointing. You see what I'm saying? And that works for me too. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the precious 
power that comes from the anointed word of God. We are so changed, Father, right now. We are so delivered right now. Breakthrough is happening right now in us, Lord Jesus, because of the anointing. Thank you for healing has come. Oh, breakthroughs has come. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, increased anointing is here for us. Because, Lord, we're, we're receiving from you the anointed word of God that brings power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. And, Lord, we prepare for what you have for us. We prepare in our lives. We prepare for this church. We prepare for what's going to take place in the days to come. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lo shanribo soto bronda bra. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, la raba ribi coro bonda branda kite bro. Lo sambro rabandi kita braha. Oh, Jesus, go raba. Thank you for the increase of anointing that's being released right now, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing that is brought by the anointed Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're teaching us. You're directing us. You're showing us. You're showing us in the power of the Word. Oh, you're showing us how the apostles operated. You're showing us how, how Jesus operated. Oh, you're showing us the heart of God. Oh, Ramba Sikata. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in our walk today. Have your way in our life, Father. Oh, Shambrota Babashata. Oh, Father, we build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Oh, we stir ourselves. We stir ourselves. We, we, we stir the embers to fire burning, burning, burning strong in us, God. Hallelujah. Roshambra. Father, such a power is coming from your presence now to us, God. Oh, Shambrondabra. In the name of Jesus. Lo Zarabandikite. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. 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 In the name of Jesus. Breakthroughs happening left and right all around us. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for witnessing of the power of God. Thank you for, for increased anointing, increased uh, 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 wisdom, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for increased finances coming. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this is the year of more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. More healings, more breakthroughs. Oh, Father, more people coming to Jesus. Lambronda brandi kita brata sata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lambrota branda kata. Hallelujah. As you're, as you're standing in prayer, get your Bible. Go back to uh, uh, Jeremiah. Oh, Ramban da kata. Hallelujah. 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 Jeremiah. Hallelujah. The fourth chapter is this is the this is the foundation of scripture that we've been reading. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramban da kata. Ramban branda. Oh, sokoto robokota. Loto branda branda kanda raba brande. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, with me. Hey, ha 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 ha. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's read chapter 4, verse 1. Let's read it, hallelujah. Uh, let, let, let look at this right here, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says this. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? This is the anointing here. You have to see what the Holy Ghost is going to show you. Amen. So I said, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the, seven, on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right bowl and the, the other. That's the anointing. That's the anointing right there. That's the burning power of God. And so I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word. Let me stop here. This is the word, which is the anointed word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we find 
he said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Holy Spirit, which is the anointing, says the Lord of hosts. And then he says, who are you, O great mountain? Behold, Zerubbabel, you shall become plain, and you shall bring forth the capstone. And notice this, with shouts of grace, grace to it. That's that anointed place. Shouting grace, 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 grace. And if you read the following verses, he tells them exactly what he's going to do. That nothing's too hard for the Lord. And so see, going back to that, those two uh, olive trees represent the anointing that's connected to these lamp bowls. And the lamps is the light that brings the bright, brilliance, power of God. It just causes inside of you the burning fire of God. You see, and when we don't have that, it's because we're not connected to the anointing. There's no longer that fire. All we have is head knowledge and word head knowledge. No anointing. But when you connect to that anointing with the word, there's power. And this is what happened here. He heard of the Lord. He heard from the Lord. And then he says, what you're seeing here is the shouts of grace, the ability of God coming on you to do what you cannot do on your own. It's grace, grace, grace. Like, like Brother Osteen would say, if, if, if you can only hear it one time, it's powerful, but you're hearing it three times. Grace, grace, grace. God is telling you, anointing, anointing, anointing on you to fulfill what you cannot do on your own. It's not by your might, it's not by your power, but it's by my spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God on you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. We receive it. We equip ourselves. We gather. We take hold of it. Thank you, Father, for this grace place. Thank you, thank you. Oh, bra, she, ki. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rabba. Ah, ye ko robo sabranda. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. See, that's what you're, that's what you're having right now is that in, increased anointing on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Lay hands on people right now. Do what you got to do today or whenever. Lay hands. Lay hands on each other. Hallelujah. Amen. Lay hands on your household. Lay, hell, lay hands on your vehicles. Lay, ooh, just, in, just impart that grace on that anointing. Just impart it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anointed, anointed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. All righty. Well, praise God. Amen. God is good. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. There's a tingling right now going on right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.